Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I will present Nicola Bizzo. Nicola Bizzo took a degree in history of music at the Università degli Studi di Torino in 2003. His research area concerns contemporary popular music, including the new ways of communication as video clip and album cover. He participated in many conferences around the world as Queen Expert and is now member of the NOVA FCSH uh, study group at the University of Lisbon. He published several papers in well-known international journals such as Music in Art and others. Nicola. Thank you. Good morning, everyone, and, and thank you to the committee to invite me. When uh, I first uh, read the, the proposal uh, that was concerning collection, uh, me and Lucia decided that uh, my Queen collection of vinyls and other items could be an interesting point uh, for this kind of uh, conference. So we decided to present it uh, in, uh, in detail. And now that's, the one, uh, that's what I'm going to show you. <coughs> so I started collecting Queen related items and memorabilia more than 25 years ago and I wa always wanted to give them a full digital archive to keep the collection organized and divided in categories. Uh, after the first years in which uh, items were photographed or, or simply scanned and put uh, in a Word document, uh, I started to create uh, an Excel database uh, and then I put some items on the web. Then uh, when the creation of the of full websites uh, with images and text has been easier and free, I decided to put all my collection on a dedicated website. Uh, for this reason, I created uh, and then I bought the domain named queenvinance.com. The main aims of this project were at the beginning particularly to have all my collection line so that it was accessible to me wherever I, I, I was and to give uh, other collection a sort of database including the tales of vinyl publications such as catalog number, years or edition and so on. Because uh, uh, my first uh, aim was to give uh, other collectors such info since there is no book or no internet database available with uh, all these kind of edition and all these details. The website queenvinos.com was off officially open to the public uh, on December 207, and since that every month has been updated with new items and new categories. Uh, now the site has been recent recently fully redesigned to improve user experience in desktop and mobile devices. Actually, its version is 3.73, and several measures have been taken to make it safe against uh, cyber attacks. Uh, the new black background of the world uh, site helps to better focus on images and is more elegant than previous blue version. The new custom logo I designed uh, recalls in the Q letter the band name Queen melted with the arm of a turntable. At the moment, uh, this, this site has more than 100 different pages, including not only all the items from my private collection, but pictures I taken and articles I wrote, especially regarding musical iconography. New pages are added when a certain topic could not be fit in an existing page or when a new category is uh, necessary. This is an example of the home page. The banner with the Queen Vinus uh, logo is uh, always present in all the pages, whilst the the, the, the banner uh, logo the, with the big pictures is different from page to page and uh, it tries always uh, to, to fit uh, the, the content of the page. Uh, in the first page there is a short description and there is uh, the, the version of the database of the, of the site itself. The main categories accessible in the right menu of each page for the site, desktop, browsers, or the bottom mob for mobile devices are the following. We have uh, awards, uh, CD, DVD, Blu-ray, magazine and newspapers, memorabilia and signing items, tour items, vinyls, documents, articles, and pictures. 
Then each category has many detailed subsections that give a better detail of each field and then can help to find exactly the wanted item in the collection. One of the main objectives of the realization of the site has been to give all the pages a single click access to facilitate the navigation and to make it quicker for the public to access the desired content. At the moment, the site contains full the detailed info when they are available for the following contents, uh, both for Queen Discography and solo related items. Over 1,300 uh, vinyls single in seven inch format, 300 vinyls in LP format, 90 vinyls in 12 inch format, over 200 CD, over 70 magazines and over 80 between DVD, Blu-ray and other video formats. There are items from 56 different countries and more than 11% of the item is from the UK. That is the most prolific market for this kind of items. The oldest record in, in collection is a vinyl from 1979 and the site is always updated with new re releases or, record, uh, re or other records uh, from the past or with uh, new releases too. The oldest item uh, in a, is uh, a comic book uh, from 1973. At the moment, the year with more items is uh, 1980, that coincided with one of the most prolific and successful period in Queen discography. All the items uh, in the site are from my personal collection and the items have been purchased in shop and fairs around the world. And a big part of records come from uh, eBay as well from our digital platforms such as Discos and Facebook Marketplace. Because the ma market changed in the last years uh, and it developed to a more digital uh, version uh, even because uh, until last year all the fairs were uh, closed. This is a, a simple uh, uh, the graphic illustrating the distribution of the items over the years. Uh, as you may see, in, uh, we have uh, a stop uh, in the last years, uh, while from 218, uh, thanks to the movie, new items appeared on the, on the market. Each uh, seven inch vinyl page has a short uh, introduction about the original album in which the song is from. And then a picture of the front sleeve is presented with a short description with the following data. We have uh, the song on side A or the songs in side A and side B, the record company, the catalog number, the country in which the item was issued, the year, and eventually some notes. Uh, as uh, in this example, uh, you can see uh, uh, a UK edition for under pressure single. All the images of the site uh, can be clicked to get an either definition file and uh, these can be downloaded. The main target of the site is to give the visitor a clear reference of what he is looking for. So for each item a reference with some details is always provided. For concert tickets, are for example, the original date of the concert is shown. There is the, the original date uh, and where the, 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 the venue in which the, the concert uh, was and uh, the, the year and so on. Then an internal search engine in, in, on, the, on the website is useful to search for particular items. Now I want to show you some archives pro, uh, procedures uh, to give uh, a full details of, of what uh, really happened in, in the collection. Regarding the vinyls, each item is carefully stored away from direct sunlight, dust, and humidity. To preserve a record on vinyl, the paper sleeve of the front cover is separated from the record is, is itself in order to avoid the ring effect. It has the sign of the record on the cover that appears after many years, especially if the vinyls are not well preserved and they are put one uh, over each other. The cover is then put on a free PVC clear bag. The vinyl is, is put in an anti-static sleeve with a clear window that makes the labels on both sides still readable for immediate checking. 
the two objects are then kept together by another clear bag that is stored in a dedicated box. Uh, all the items are then put in chronological order to make them uh, easily accessible. This work for seven inch records. Uh, similar procedures are used for CD books and magazines. Each item, after uh, it has been scanned or photographed to, for archival purposes, is then put in a specific cabinet, uh, and all the items are divided in chronological order with the same songs or album. All the different editions share the same place in the cabinet. Here you can see a detail from the LP section in which uh, each box uh, contains uh, uh, a single LP album. The same operation applies to concert ticks and, and backstage passes, where all the items are in chronological order and full accessible. This operation will help to find uh, them again for future research uh, or for further details uh, to be checked. You can see an example of uh, this, uh, the album uh, with the uh, concert tickets, uh, while the concert posters are framed uh, since uh, their dimensions are very important. Uh, this year, I've, I've, uh, last year, I've been contacted by Greg Brooks, uh, the official Queen archivist. He found the site uh, and uh, online, of course, and he asked me, asked me the permission to use the high resolution image of some items uh, especially Vines, from a forthcoming book about Queen Memorabilia. The book, called I Want It All, should be published at the end of uh, next year. It is a huge project in two volumes uh, that try to show all the most curious and exotic memorabilia regarding the Queen universe. The archivist was very surprised to find all these different editions from different countries, not only because Queen themselves don't have it, but even because they didn't know them. So I give him the permission to use uh, the images, uh, giving me uh, and the site full credits, uh, and a short preview of the site has been published on the record, uh, on the English magazine Record Collector, one of the main magazines uh, of that kind, uh, on uh, March of this year. You may see the cover of the, of the special issue of the magazine, and this is uh, 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 an example of, uh, of the pages uh, where you can see uh, in uh, Britain a stone called the Crazy Rarities, top collectors Paul Bird and Nicola Bizzo they take us through the top 20 and uh, top 100 and so on. So you, all you can see, all the records, you, uh, almost all the records you can see are from my personal collection with all uh, the details uh, and, uh, and so on. Because, of course, when uh, Queen uh, recorded a specific song, uh, they fin the, their job uh, almost finished and uh, they, they didn't uh, were aware uh, of uh, all the different editions that spread uh, all around the, the world. Even if uh, the, 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 the Brian May, the guitarist of Queen, was a collector of... Uh, Queen memorabilia, uh, they didn't, still didn't know so many things. Uh, on uh, May of this year, I published on queenvinyls.com an exclusive interview with uh, Craig, Greg Brooks, uh, the archivist, uh, and our collaboration will go on in, in the next month, probably even after the publication of the book. So we have uh, this uh, interview, uh, I try to... to to analyze what is uh, his work uh, as an uh, archivist uh, and uh, how he, his, uh, his, uh, his feelings about uh, the collection and, uh, and, and all the songs he can listen to. From December uh, of 2007, more than uh, half a million people visited the site. After the first year in which it was not known and in which there were less items and articles, it is now visited more than 20 times a day. And it's been here, best year has been 2018 uh, with more than 55,000 visits. Uh, when the biopic my movie, Bohemian Rhapsody, increased the web traffic, as you may see. For the last year, the last year of full, the country that generated more visits has been the UK, followed then by USA and Italy. Mm. 
most of the referral has been generated by social media forums and web search engines. A small number of visits came from Wikipedia too. The collaboration and partnership with many other queen related sites increases the web traffic and bring new visitors each day. In a long term window, the site should receive many updates and changes. The principal ones are the following. Add more images for each record. Now most of Vines have only one pitch. The ideal solution would be to have four images in total, side A, side B, a front cover and back cover, so an item will be visible in all the details. We organize the LP section to better categorize the items, maybe using a year filter. Add more exclusive interviews with people that work together with Queen. Increase the collaboration with social media and with other sites. Add more items to the whole database, especially books uh, with cover and ESBN, ESBN details. At the moment, there are no books uh, on the site. And add more specific articles regarding Queen music, uh, composition, iconography, and so on. Include then in the database some specific only files items, such as, uh, as, such as high resolution audio or concert bootlegs and uh, add a watermark to images uh, to preserve their uh, abuse outside the site. All these changes should increase the visitor's number and should fix some small mistakes introduced in the site itself, uh, such as missing info for a picture or wrong year for an item. The way of collecting queer related items and memorabilia, both official and unofficial, has changed in the last years. While fairs, fairs are uh, always one of the best uh, places to find items, the use of virtual marketplaces make it easier to find some rare records. Many big collectors in the last year decided to sell a part of the whole collection, and in these circumstances it's possible to add new items to a collection or to upgrade some uh, items to have them in better shape. The site uh, is always ready to be a real mirror of the collection. Uh, it does require an effort, but it guarantees the possibility to have all the records uh, and the other item, items as well, digitalized and archived. This helps me to make some interesting and statistics as the previous slide shown and to categorize the, the items to find them for future research. The catalog number and the open uh, uh, are then open to other collectors who want to share their records uh, and increase their collection, giving them a full database to start with. In the past, similar fields for researching items were available only in print catalogs, always based by other collectors, since no official publication has ever been made with all the details useful for collectors. The main aim of the site is trying to fill this gap. It started as a personal project, but during the years it became a useful database for other collectors as well, and it became a, a source for Queen themselves. Thank you. Thank you, Nicola, for your paper. And uh, any question? My question um, is about something we were talking yesterday on our social dinner. I think that how can a collector like you, who works uh, for so many years on this topic, um, um, have the courage to go on and to challenge himself to improve ways to approach uh, the collection? Thanks for the question. The reply is, is uh, always in finding new items. Uh, finding new items uh, uh, gives, me the, give, uh, gives me the opportunity to discover new things, uh, new correlation with uh, other uh, researchers uh, or with uh, other fields uh, that uh, at, the, at the beginning uh, I still uh, didn't know that they uh, exist. When I start collecting Queen or just listening simply to the music, uh, I could not imagine that uh, I, uh, I would uh, ever find 
correlation, uh, for example, with dance, uh, with the Nijinsky dress, uh, just for one, one example, with the uh, Esker, the, the, the Dutch uh, artist, uh, just to give uh, some uh, of these kinds. And uh, so whenever I find a new item, uh, it uh, leads me to new uh, unexplored fields, uh, and this is what's uh, uh, help me to, to, do, to go on with the collection. Okay, uh, sorry, I have another question. Yeah. Maybe you, you told it in your presentation, if you did, sorry, because I, I had to go, you know, that I have to go outside for uh, conference symposium things. But I'm curious about one thing. Um, do you consider that the um, um, language um, countries, uh, Portuguese speaking countries like uh, Angola, Brazil, and so on, were influenced concerning the Queen records, were influenced by Portugal on the di diffusion and the in the conception of the of the, the sleeves, or no, or Portugal has no direct uh, influence, has a, a first stop for an idea or for something? No, no, it's, it's very clear. Uh, only Ang Angola has a direct influence uh, because uh, Queen uh, only published uh, officially, uh, at least uh, for what is known nowadays, uh, two records, uh, and uh, their releases uh, were identical to the Portuguese releases. Uh, whilst uh, for uh, Brazil and uh, other countries, uh, each uh, EMI um, office, uh, so the, la the label uh, company, decided by themselves. Only from uh, 1984, all uh, the covers were uh, standardized, standardized uh, and were all the same all over the world. But uh, before, uh, each uh, office uh, has uh, his own decision. Okay, thank you. No more question. If there are no more questions, I will present the second one, but I don't know which is. <laughs> Claudia Sousa? No. Ah, okay, good. Sí, pues puedes utilizar esto. I'm sorry, I know that I should make my, my presentation, but I really need some minutes. Um, I want uh, to... Um, I will say in Portuguese. I would like just to say something. Um, this symposium uh, was a challenging event because it, it was supposed to be an... It was su supposed to be an... an presence uh, presence event but we had to to go for a mixed solution um, like uh, online in presence symposium uh, because of the covid 19 pandemia and this it was really <coughs> challenging and i i have to to now to to pay the the, the homage to to the to all of these um, persons and I want to, to talk a little bit about, about it. I will start with Alexandre, who is there. He was the responsible for our symposium logo, inspired in Patudos and in the Beethoven vase. So, Alexandre. Then uh, I will also like to say two names who are not in here, Maria Fernandes and Luis Souza, who you know, but Maria Fernandes was a former uh, music iconography student. She helped me a lot. And um, also in Patudos, we have Nuno, who, who <laughs> worked a lot. We have uh, Rui Araújo with informatics. We have Pedro Souza, also in technical support. We have, uh, uh, I will say it in pair, uh, because it's fancy, Vera, Inácio, and Cristiane Vicente, who are our, our management, scientific management team. It can be like that. So, <laughs> if you need something from CESM, 
uh, if you are in the United States, in Japan, in China, but you need something from CESM, it's Vera and Cristiana, so don't forget it. So we have also Claudia Souza. She's a music iconography PhD candidate, but also a babysitter of my daughters on her free time. <laughs> Also Vera and everyone, everyone. We have Luisa from Cezem's book editions. <laughs> we have Beatrice, also a PhD uh, candidate on music iconography. <laughs> Maria Rita on my right and Maria Carlota on my left. So I must say thank you very much. Muito obrigado, because without them that would not be possible. And João Tacão, uh, it's <laughs> very, very important. And Alexandre Sebastião. Sorry, João, sorry, I forgot, I forgot. And I, I must say, João Eusebio, who helped with everything with Benedetta and Claudia Ribeiro in the coffee break. So, as you can see, sometimes people say, oh, Luzia, you are having so much work. No, no, it's, it's not just not me. It's all, all these people. And Casmira Alves, the Vereadora from Alpiar. Thank you. Since, since we are at, uh, in uh, as a thank yous, uh, thank you to, uh, for hosting us here, you know, and it was, uh, thank you, Lucia, so for initiating this, this whole, uh, and for you to, to bring us here, because this is a special occasion that we would not otherwise uh, see. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's also thank yous to you too. You <laughs> Of course, thank you, Zdravko, for trusting us, for, uh, for organizing the event. Thank you. Well, let's move on with the conference. So now it's me and Nuno. Josef Mascarenhas Helvas was an important politician, art collector, and a musician. An historic Republican, it was him who proclaimed the Repl Republic from the balcony of Lisbon City Hall. He was not only a politician, but also Minister of Finances, Portuguese Ambassador in Spain, President of the Council of Ministers and Mi Minister of the Interior. He was also an important farmer and an art collector and a violin player, an amateur musician. Owner of a private collection, art collection at Casa dos Patudos, nowadays a, pub a public museum, with more than 8,000 objects. Some are related to his favorite composer, Beethoven. José Helvas was passionate about music. He founded in 1889 the Lisbon Chamber Music Quintet played and played the violin in public and private concerts, supported Portuguese musicians and sponsored the reception in Portugal of foreign musicians such as Eugène Isaí and Raul Punho. He insisted on giving music a prominent place in, the, in his daily life and a place of honor in his home soirees. The same happened with his art collection, which include precious objects in the field of musical iconography, such as Meissen centerpieces, as you can see here, and the rare portrait of the composer Domenico Scarlatti. So let's see the place of Beethoven in Helva's collection. In 1895, he commissioned to the Beethoven vase to the Portuguese ceramist and his cl close friend, Rafael Bordal Pinheiro. Um, the single piece of glazed clay with 2.3 meters high of Roca inspiration was the result of Rodalus Pinheiro enthusiasm. It is a narrative artwork capable of expressing in clay visual elements of Beethoven life and work and even sound aspects as you has an imaginary soundscape. Unfortunately, José Helvas thought that the object was too large for Casa dos Patudos salons. In this way, the Beethoven vase was rejected, and the smaller mother, with 50 centimeters, was made later in 1902. The vase's iconography 
program is related to the personal musical taste of José Helvas, an amateur violin player, as I told you. Was, uh, and he, is, 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 it is depicted in here, the open bars, just let me, ah, this is the perspective of the vase, and um, we can see in here the open bars of the first mo movement of Beethoven's string quartet number no. four in C minor, opus 18. It was suggested that Beethoven's C minor uh, quartet is based on material from his earliest period in Bonn. Whatever the truth, the work represents him at full power so far as he had involved it around 1800 when the six opus 18 quartets were being composed. C minor has always been connected with Beethoven in trenchant mood and there is some of that here, a direct shortness of address, a certain impatience with the finesse of transition and the clear simplicity of texture with instantly a similar melodic, melodic invention. For all this, there is no lack of subtlety in the proportions and the sense of movement. It has perfect as a cat. In the crisply affected first movement, we feel strong, uh, we feel strong purpose rather than the tragedy of or pathos often associated with a minor key. So this is the, the, the opening that we can see in the Beethoven vase. So this score is being played, sorry, is being played by four performers that we can see in here. Despite the small size of the musician, there is a lot of accuracy in their fingery, fingering position. On the opposite side, two amateurs listen to the performance a medallion with the composer's bust is guarded by a large eagle at the top. The personified figure of fame on his knees and spread wings with a laurel wreath on one hand uses the, other to, uses the other to set down his trumpet, unnecessary in the face of such greatness of both music and composer. At another point, Another fame standing, spreading, spreading his wings, holding a, a baton in his hand. At the foot of the jar, the figure of time is on the ground, vanquished, surrounded by a putu hole holding a lyre. And the female figures of harmony and melody play an organ. We have the Portuguese words harmonia and melodia. We also see a ribbon with, with the inscription a José Helvas, o seu amigo Rafael Bordal Pinheiro. To José Helvas from his friend Rafael Bordal Pinheiro. The old piece is wrapped in foliage in a Baroque movement intending to give an inspiring image. The fabulous and giant vase, the first one I presented to you, was then exhibited in Lisbon at the Teatro Dona Amélia. No one was willing to pay the large sum of money requested by Bordal Pinheiro, and he decided to take it with him to Brazil in 1899 for a fancy exhibition in Rio de Janeiro. There was also no buyer, being the vase raffled off. Since the lucky number was not purchased, he offers the vase to the president of the Republic of Brazil. Bordalo returned to Portugal and the Beethoven vase stained on Brazilian territory. As we can see here, Pão de Açúcar, Bordalo returning to, the, to, the, to Portugal, represented by the Belen Tower and the, the Zé Povinho, a, uh, um, a character Bordalo created to represent Portuguese people. And we see the, the ghost of the Beethoven vase behind him. So it was like really bad luck. We have another uh, object to show you, the key cover cloth for the family piano that represents the first five bars of the Waldstein Sonata. 
The 19th century Beethoven biographer Wilhelm Lenz describes, described the Waldstein Sonata Opus 53 as a heroic symphony for piano. Certainly, it is among the most dazzlingly brilliant of all Beethoven's middle period, period works. It is one that exploits a full range of keyboard effects and finds the composer for the first time in his piano sonatas, making use of a keyboard with an extended compass, reaching up a major third higher than the five octave range that had been used sever, um, ever since the days of Mozart and Haydn. Perhaps it is not by chance that preliminary ideas for the first movement are preceded in the composer, composer's sketchbook by keyboard exercises consisting of scales in parallel tense and in contrary, contrary motion. So, um, I think that this, we have not so many information about this cover cloth, key cover cloth, but um, I, I suppose that it was com com commissioned with the um, particular choice of José Helves. It was an object made for him and for his pleasure, for his taste. When he opened the piano, he wanted to see what he likes, his favorite composer. In the music room that you visit this morning, you, we, find, we found also, oh, sorry, this is the except of the, the first bars. Here, another image. In our visit this morning, we also saw this lithography standing in the music room. This is a Spanish lithography after Johann St Stefan Decker drawing from 1824. Uh, maybe, since it is a Spanish lithography, we can assume that it was purchased during the period uh, that José Helves was a, Spanish, uh, a Portuguese ambassador in Spain. So, this is the the, the central objects that we know that were favorite and uh, specially owned by José Helves. Um, our idea was also to discuss um, some of our thoughts regarding these objects as uh, being part of a private collection in the first place. We uh, uh, talked a little bit and we, we assume that they sh probably should occupy a, sp a special disposition, a special di display on the house, on the physical house, so that José Helves could see the objects when he wanted in a very easy way. Nowadays, we don't know where they were in the first place, especially the lithography and the Beethoven vase. But the problem of um, changing a uh, private collection to a public one is that this special love for some objects from some pieces is lost. For the visitor today, if uh, only if Nuno or Anna Cristina refers that, that Beethoven was the favorite composer of José Helves, only that, in that way, someone could think or understood why these objects are so special. Otherwise, they are just anonymous objects in the middle of 8,000 pieces of the collection. And that's a change from a, a private and special and love collection to a public one. Um, I think that uh, it should be important in the future to discuss, to have a further discussion about the private collections that um, uh, are nowadays public, because there are a lot to say and a lot to study about it. Um, we uh, simply just prepared this uh, presentation to show you our particular objects. And since we are so exhausted, we didn't have time to go further, but we are planning to transform this in a, an article for publishing. But of course, that we still have to discuss a lot more. And we are still trying to find some iconographic evidence that show us where the objects were on the first place, on the house so that we can understand why they were so special for his owner. So, thank you very much for your attention. <laughs> Sorry. We just want also to thank to, to, to say a thank you, a very special thank you to Daniel Neves, who made this wonderful sketch of the Beethoven vase that you will all receive on a, uh, later, later on, has a, has a souvenir for the tour you made this morning and for 
for this special piece for Beethoven and for José Helva's memory. So thank you. Any question? Um, maybe Professor Simbra can help me. It's still in a museum. Uh, professor, you have to, to... I, I think it still is in, in a dark corner of a Brazilian museum. Yes, National Museum in Rio de Janeiro. But that's another history, the, the history of the peace in Brazil. Because uh, I think there's, there's an article in, in the internet by so Marisa tira Malta. Tira máscara, tira máscara, senão não se percebe. There's an article uh, on the net by Marisa Malta about the, the, the original and with photos and all this, and I think it's in the National Museum of Rio de Janeiro. Yes, I think so. That's exactly. nearby the, the Opera Theater. Cool. And uh, the other question, uh, just to go one, one slide back to the drawing. Uh, if it's a Spanish lithograph after a drawing, uh, where was the connection, uh, was the copy of the drawing brought to Spain? No. Uh, or uh, what was, uh, how the two met? That we have no information, Zdravko. I know it's a very important question and a very relevant one, but I wish I could have some more <laughs> info about that. But we don't have so, so many info. Because it's interesting for reception of uh, Beethoven I know. In, in here. That's why I'm. Uh, Let me just ask Nun. Is there algum papel da compra desta litografia? No, I was, uh, because in, in the case of Scarlatti portrait, yeah. we have a, um, a written note, note yeah. that tell us where he, where he bought the portrait and how much he paid. And I was asking Nun if there exists a similar note regarding this lithography, but we don't know. Because, uh, and it's not signed, lithograph, or it is? No, it, it's a printed Spanish name uh, on yeah. the, the right side. Yeah, it looks like I can see something. Because if, there, if it's a lithographer, uh, a lithograph, it's not the only one. There must be yeah. some other lithograph somewhere yeah. in For yeah. sure, for sure. Yeah. So yeah. maybe yeah. Benedetta can tell us if he saw any the other copy. Lithography come probably after uh, um, Cuba that uh, draw many lit lithography from, uh, from other, um, from other uh, Beethoven's uh, portrait. And um, it, it was very, co the, this lithography is the reverse of Johann Stefan yes. Becker's drawing. Yes. And um, uh, probably the whole process uh, is simply like that. Uh, I suppose that Josef Kruber was the first lithographer. And then uh, uh, probably the, um, the lithography uh, went to Spain mm -hmm. and the Spanish one, he raised Josef uh, um, Kruger, uh, Kruger, name, yeah. Kruger um, name. sign, sign uh, yes. um, and, 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 and wrote yeah. something different. Okay. Because we had this experience, we, we, we had this experience uh, that was very common, sort of forgery. Uh, uh, you, you, you can take uh, an image that originally was uh, conceived by some, some, someone else uh, mm -hmm. and then you, uh, you just uh, put your signature uh, uh, on the bottom. Well, it's a copy of a copy. Yeah, a copy yeah. of a, co a copy. copy. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, think, I think that makes sense. It doesn't, doesn't necessarily need to be forgery. N no. It's a <laughs> copy of a copy. <laughs> you know, it's a copy, it's a copy of, of a copy. It's yeah. a copy of a copy. <laughs> but, but you know, you, you, uh, you attribute you, yourself a, a, a work of uh, another. So yeah, but it's a copy, it's a lithograph. All it yes, uh, yes, you know, yes, uh, yes, sure, sure. I think this is, could be uh, uh, an hypothesis, this is my suggestion. Mm. But yes, uh, I think it makes sense. But it's attacking. very interesting because uh, Johann Stefan Decker uh, was not so um, uh, love and, and uh, so popular uh, in, in never, never, because this, this image uh, did not fit uh, to our idealized Beethoven. Mm -hmm. So it, uh, it, it is interesting that uh, this was uh, the, um, 
the chosen yes, image the chosen by José yeah. Elvish. But yes. it's not difficult to, to trace the, um, uh, the whole copy and copy of the copy uh, of this uh, uh, first drawing and then uh, lito lithography, lithography that come afterwards. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. That you this so is very cool, what yeah. you have here. Yes, yes, <laughs> I also think so. We, we must work further. That, that's that's uh, for real. You underlined that uh, one of the main problems uh, to change uh, the collection from a private to a public one is uh, to identify some uh, of uh, its specifics, um, as you told us before, because Beethoven was his favorite uh, composer and so on. But I think uh, that uh, there is uh, even uh, an opposite problem that can uh, emerge is that uh, maybe a private collector uh, uh, try to underline too much uh, some items some in items. his collections, whilst they, for scholars, for, for his research, they still don't have uh, any importance uh, or less importance than what is underlined by a private one. So it's uh, quite difficult to find uh, a balancing uh, between uh, the, the two things. Uh, Yes, yes, uh, I'm glad that you pointed that out. Yes, I saw it by one, by in one way and you saw it in, in another way. So I, I was saying that the, the object loses importance when they, they go from a, a private to a, a public collection, some objects. Yes. But you are telling the, the reverse that is quite right and very important, that some object, have, have, they have too many importance in, in, in a private sphere and, and the others are balanced <laughs> so that, that's that's a good point of view. Thank you, Nicola. Thank you, Sora. See, si. so I was saying is exactly the same. You need to be careful and to establish a kind of a hierarchy of the di the different uh, objects because it, it was it is very different to have the the, the Beethoven vase, who is obviously a very exceptional homage to uh, José Alves and to Beethoven, or to have a simple lithography. Lithography were the most common things on 19th century. Copies of copies were absolutely frequent. I remember the, the covers of the, the, the piano fantasies in mid 19th century Portugal were copies of the recording ones. Uh, so it's, it's, it's something so common. Uh, for me, this is exactly the same as uh, a score of uh, Beethoven symphony for, for, for four hands. Yes, it was the way people had in, the, in that time to know uh, works or to know the face of uh, their idol. And I, I, I think a hierarchy is absolutely essential. Yeah, thank you, Professor. Okay. I, uh, of course, it yes. Uh, thank I, you for we, I agree entirely. Yes. Uh, I, I also just want to add that it was our first intention also to analyze the Pianola scrolls. Uh, the scrolls uh, for for Pianol, uh, for the Pianol you saw in the music room, but uh, it, we had no time. But uh, that's also a very important item in the in the, in the Beethoven in collection of José Helvas. This is uh, this is what I wanted to ask. Uh, do you have any scores, uh, music, uh, printed music, or whatever? Scores. Uh, scores. A, a particular Beethoven work is not. Yes, for. Yeah. Uh, Yes, we because uh, you know from from the collection of music you could uh, deduct his preferences. You know, if he has one score of Beethoven and seven of Bruckner, or you know. You, you know, if if we think about you didn't saw it, but you if you if we think about the collection that they have in here of scores, uh, programs of concerts in Portugal, in Germany, so many uh, papers that are visually important to the mm -hmm. Portuguese and um, European music, history of music of that period, we need to ask for a full-time scholar to be here for one year <laughs> to study and to analyze it all. We need to create a project, photographs, so many important yeah. photographs. Uh, also because José Helvens and the Sun were touring has, um, f in Europe, in the main uh, theaters. So they have a lot of um, souvenirs from those uh, concerts they, they elected to see. Uh, and that, that is very important to analyze from the reception point of view that you were yes. saying. But we don't have at this moment the um, opportunity to have a, um, a student or someone in here studying the collections at a full time, in a full time project. Uh, and, and uh, 
eu queria diários também. Sim. And his um, journals from the, their, mm -hmm. their travels. Well, it's so many things to do in here. So you know, it's, uh, it's, it's kind of popular now uh, topic, Grand Tour, 18th century Grand Tour. And this is like a late 19th century Grand Tour yes. of, of him going to, to around. They have in here 50,000 50, documents and 5,000 photographs in José Ferro's collection. So a lot of work to do. But they are available online if you want to, to make some research on your own countries. Okay, so thank you very much, Lucia and uh, Mr. <laughs> Bregado. Claudia Souza graduated in artistic studies at the Faculty of Letters of the University of Coimbra. She also participated in an Erasmus exchange program with the Università degli Studi di Parma. Recently, she also took a master in music teaching at the Aveiro University. In summer of 2019, uh, she participated in the Nova Summer School attending the course Museology and Music, a musical artistic heritage of Portuguese museum. Since then, her research has been focused on musical iconography and organology in Portugal, showing a special interest in Portuguese tapestries. Thank you. So good afternoon, everyone. Um, this presentation is part of a work in progress concerning my PhD investigation that has started like three weeks ago, so <laughs> it's really in the beginning. Um, but music within tapestries, uh, whether they're of, of Portuguese origin or ordered by Portugal from French or Flemish manufacturers. And today I just bring you a starting point, in this case from Porto Alegre's uh, tapestry. So I'm from Porto, but in 2018, I moved uh, to Porto Alegre to teach. And um, on my first cultural visit of the city, I visited the Museu de Tapeçarias de Porto Alegre, uh, Guifino, and the Manufatura de Tapeçarias de Porto Alegre, which is the manufacturer where they were um, with. And this kind of tapestry has a very recent history uh, comparing with the Flemish and French tradition. And I was very surprised and delighted. Uh, I got to know this technique and also, and especially, the musical motifs I, I found in this support. So, um, we, we, uh, tapestry in Portugal uh, was for many centuries an order made to France or Flanders and today we can find varied motifs in several national museums, such as the Museu Nacional da Arte Antiga, the Lamego Museum, uh, Palacio da Ajuda, among others. Uh, the largest collection of the, these same copies, um, these same um, tapestries, was carried out by Maria José de Mendonça, who was a conservative and um, uh, at the Museo Nacional de Arte Antiga and responsible for the creation of a workshop for textile restoration of the José de Figueiredo Institute, an organization uh, responsible for um, conserving and restoring um, the state's movable works of art. And later they changed the name to Portuguese Institutes of Conservation and Restoration. And the tapestry of Porto Alegre uh, actually doesn't uh, belong to this catalog because of his um, recent history. It was not placed in the catalog we see here from 1983. So there was a first attempt to create a Portuguese tapestry in the aftermath of the um, uh, 1755 earthquake in which Mercas de Pombal uh, tried to found two tapestries uh, factories, one in Lisbon and another in Tavira, but none of them had success. And the second, uh, the second attempt resulted from a joint effort of two friends, Guy Fino and Manuel Celestino Peixeiro, uh, who sought to ref revive the tradition of the North Point rugs in Porto Alegre. And at first, they didn't go as planned, but then uh, Manuel Celestino's father, uh, Manuel do Carmo Peixeiro, 
formerly a textile student at the French School of Roubaix, challenged the two young men to make moral tapestry with a point of his own creation. And so they opened the Manif Manufactura in 1946. And so just to explain how the Portalec tapestry um, gets done, so we have some steps. First, the card, then passing the card to paper, choosing the colors and the weaving process. So here we can see some examples. Um, so the, um, the card from the painter is projected with this projector and then it's, um, it will uh, be drawn in millimeter paper in the size intended for the tapestry. The following is a process of choosing the threads and colors uh, which before weaving goes to the painter's approval with this little card. So here we see uh, an example, sorry, I can't point. But here we have an example that was sent uh, to, to a painter so that he would approve before the weaving process. And then finally, the, the effective uh, weaving process begins and we have series of one, four or eight tapestries that are um, identified in the bottom uh, uh, or on the back side um, with all the um, dimensions and the signature and the indication of the, um, and also the autograph of the artist because he has to approve everything, even, even the final step. So now the marketing uh, is also important in this time. So in order to get the attention of the regime, uh, they would invite some artists like Guilherme Camarinha, João Tavares, or uh, Almada Negreiros, who would create uh, tapestries for many public buildings, uh, such as the National Library, the Ministry of Finance, and other public buildings. But at the same time, they would invite uh, contemporary artists like Julio Pumar, Carlos Carneiro, and so, um, so that they wouldn't be just closed up in the uh, regime vision. And so perfection was necessary. And the goal was even that the painter would perceive their traits and not the weaver's hands. And it was thanks to this perfection that the internationalization of tapestry, Porta Lex tapestry was achieved. And I just recall this episode with Jean Lussard um, that had offered the tapestry to Gifino's wife, which is this one on the left. And uh, Gifino asked permission to reproduce it in Porto Alegre. And then he the, the monograms that um, we can't really, you can't really see, but it's right here on the right, on the left corner, uh, on the right tapestry. And so uh, he hid them so that Lussard could select which one was the French because it was the tapestry until then considered more perfect. And Lussard selected Portalegre. And from then on, all his works began to be woven in Portalegre uh, until his death. And it was thanks to Lussard that the Manufactura gained international reputation. So after all this, I brought to you some of the musical motifs we can see in the Museo de Tapsarias Porto Alegre, um, which is actually um, an initiative from the Porto Alegre Town Hall, who then opened uh, a museum. And so um, all the Manufatura worked with more than 200 artists. And I think till 2012, I think it's the last uh, one, last, um, found I found had like 3,000, more or less 3,000 tapestries, different kind of ones. And at least 50 of them I found already with musical motifs. So first we, we uh, see uh, Guilherme Camarinha, like w the first one to work uh, with the government support, of course. Then we see some that um, were invited to draw um, by the manufacturer, like Carlos Carreiro. This one has a very nice name. It's a concert for a painter that hasn't left the egg. And here we have José Guimarães, music one. And he also, he has 
four musics, like one, two, three, four, but I couldn't, uh, I, I couldn't see yet um, number two and number three because they are in private collections, but I, I brought to you number four as well. Here we have also Graça Moraes. This one is inspired in, uh, in a children's song, which is Pombinhas da Catrina. And here we have like uh, the example of, of how the tapestries were used. So this is the Tribunal Constitucional, the, the main court in Lisbon. And uh, the tapestries were first um, just used to, to decorate the public buildings. But then there was a new goal, which is also to conserve heritage, because here we see Domingo Lisboeta, which is a, a mural from the Lisbon ports, uh, like the Garda de Alcântara. We can see Para here the tiles. De Lisboa, nomeadamente a Garda de Alcântara e a Garda de Rocha de Conde Pobres. Não sei porque é que isto... Procurarem responder às Sorry. seguintes questões. Sorry, I don't know why this is... Okay, it's fine. Thank you. Here we have the tapestry that was made after the Garda Alcântara because um, there's a funny story. Actually, it was uh, ordered to Almada Negreiros to make, this one is the Nau Catrineta. And um, actually, he, he said, I will do something about Nau Catrineta. And so the regime was really happy because Nau Catrineta is like a, a story about discovery. Uh, dis um, so like, um, to, to share the Portuguese her heritage of conquering the world and everything. But then he dressed everyone, and we can see here that we have the, um, the fishermen and the poor people of Lisbon. And so they, they were really insulted with some of the drawings, and they just considered to destroy the, um, the murals. And so, um, and so uh, Gifino actually talked, he has uh, like a letter to Almada Negreiros, and he said, even if they don't destroy it, I want to do the tapestry so that it, we won't lose anything. And so uh, with a lot of effort, because it was kind of hard to sell and, and to pay for them, but he did all the, the guards um, in tapestry. So then we have some international artists here. We have Tom Phillips has this Concerto Grosso. Oh, sorry. This one is, uh, is mu Music Symposium, not Concerto Grosso. Sorry, it was my fault. And here we have World Music One and World Music Two. And also here, the Julie Saul Dias. Here are some Renato Torres, which is one also of the government's favorite artists. And now I show you, these ones are uh, some of the works that were already in the museum, but they aren't right now. Uh, they were in other, uh, some temporary exhibitions because these materials circulate a lot. But here we have Le Corbusier, Le Musicien, which is one of the works that's always on the, um, on the collection. And also Cruzeiro Seixas, this one um, also with, um, like I, I see a Portuguese guitar. And here also was the, actually the first uh, tapestry I worked on. And it's uh, Julio Pumar, um, A Bela Aurora. Um, and I, I think uh, it was this one that sparked uh, me to this, uh, to this topic, to iconography. And so besides, uh, I was delighted obviously to see this, but when I went to the museum, um, I just saw some music, but it was completely hidden. So you see in the museum, we have like all the cards uh, displayed like this, they don't have the names of the works. And then we see in here, uh, I, yeah, in here there's music in this really small card in the top, right here, which is from Cesar Vieira, uh, which is a Portuguese architect, and he did this tapestry. Uh, actually, this tapestry looks all yellow, you know, but it has 17 different types of yellow inside. Um, and also here, so the Cruzeiro Seixas we saw before is right here. And also here we have some 
music as well. And I know I didn't bring a lot of uh, information because this is quite new, but I hope you uh, enjoyed my presentation. So thank you very much. Thank you to Claudia Souza uh, for this uh, very interesting, uh, uh, totally new <coughs> presentation. And now we end this session with uh, uh, Manuel Mendes Madeira. Hmm? Yeah. Ah, sorry, uh, there are <laughs> any questions? I, I think there are no <laughs> questions. <laughs> yeah, I think we... No? No. <laughs> No question? Ah, yes. <laughs> so you, you showed uh, the cards yeah. in the museum, so uh, there are a lot of cards, and I'm asking if you saw, you said that you didn't saw all the tapestries, yeah. so there are, vou perguntar em português. Ok, um, I translate. Sim, obrigada. Viste, pronto, se aquelas tapeçarias, tanto tu não viste todas, viste muitas, são várias salas, por, por exemplo, eu estou habituada a ver tapeçarias antigas, não é? Uh -huh. Datadas e realmente são modernas e muito interessantes. E queria perceber se também viste muitas tapeçarias um, no museu, ou se mais os, os cards. Ah, sim. Ok. So, uh, she's asking if I only saw the cards and not the tapestries. Um, some, uh, I, will ask, uh, I will answer in English, okay? Um, there are more cards than tapestry in the museum, but it's because uh, many of the tapestries were sold uh, in auctions to uh, private collectors. Um, I, I want to go to another one. There's one in Coimbra. <laughs> Oh, sorry, I, for, I really forgot that Porto Alegre is really one hour from here. I'm sorry, I forgot to put the map where it is. It's in Alentejo, okay? It's just more or less 100 kilometers from here to the interior side. And, uh, sorry. And um, there's actually an, one in Coimbra. I, I was told it's in a clinic, like a night clinic, and there's a tapestry in the waiting room. And uh, I, didn't, I didn't know, but someone that knows I'm studying tapestry just called me, oh, I was in the doctor's office, <laughs> and I saw a tapestry with music. So it's, um, yeah, I'll have to go around the country to, <laughs> to look for them, yes. <laughs> but I'm surprised that the, the manufacturer doesn't keep the track, uh, the catalog of their own uh, tapestries that they produce, they don't? Yeah, they have it, but all by hand and uh, in the head of an 82-year-old woman, uh, <laughs> which is Donna Fernanda. Uh, we, uh, I'm working with her, and I'm hoping uh, she will keep with her precious memory because um, there are many things that aren't written down, but then I ask her, and she knows everything about the tapestry, even if it was sold and it's not written down because uh, when it's sold from the manufacturer, that's written. But if it's uh, sold again in an auction, maybe it's not written in the manufacturer registers, but she knows about it because she continues to search about the tapestries that come out of the manufacturer. You should hurry up and do the catalog. Yes, <laughs> I know. <laughs> Thank you very much, Claudia. I have Thank a very you. difficult question for you. Okay. Because, but, but I know you, and I hope you don't have already a question, uh, an answer. Okay. But anyway, I would like to think, to, to hear what you think about that. What are the limits of music in these representations for you? Yeah, um, after the catalog, because I think I have to hurry up really because of Donna Fernanda's age. <laughs> That's really my first question, in what way, um, uh, music is important in this uh, support, obviously. Um, I think uh, in this modern uh, tapestry, like in Porta Alegre's tapestry, uh, tapestry especially, uh, it is um, easier to, to look for why the artist chose to bring the music to the, the motif. But in the Renaissance ones or 
Um, uh, I don't know exactly if the music is there. Why is the music there? But I think it's worth uh, asking why. So I don't have the answer, but I have the question also. <laughs> So, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>